So about a month ago, I filmed a video to make new spindles for the new Viscount Vincent, and the spindles work great, except they bind a little bit at, at full lock. So right here at full lock, this gets tight. It's a little bit less of a turn. You can see it opens up. So this is supposed to not get tight when it's all the way out here to where I can't twist it. So got a little bit of binding. So what we're going to do is I'm going to rebuild these parts here and just reattach them at an angle. So you can see right now there's an angle in this and this new one's going to be basically level with the ground. So what we're going to do to fix that is I've made new brackets and we're going to attach them level with the ground instead of offset. Right now they're kind of they're square with the kingpin but that puts an angle in it to it for the kingpin inclination and also i put this this here so you can see when you twist it that's kind of level with the ground you'll see the axis changes the kingpin goes through its travel maybe you can see that how it changes let me get the better angle on the camera you see how it changes direction it's hitting the other tire anyway we're going to fix this so i'm going to cut these apart weld on new parts and try to get rid of that binding Okay, so we cut off the old arm that's here on the bench, welded on the new arm and a new gusset. Um, so it's basically just kind of reverse where this was located. This was previously down below the gusset, now it's on top of the gusset, and it should be level. So I've got this set up to where the spindle is pretty much level with the workbench, and this is just about level with that. And it's in the same exact spot as far as the offset goes for the Ackerman. So I already put it back on the cart before I welded this on. So now I'm gonna cut the other one apart, do the same thing, and I'll take that off the cart and kind of show you uh, side by side what the two pieces look like, the previous design and the revised design. Again, the whole goal is to get rid of the binding in the uh, spindles and the tie rods. Okay, so here's the new design. See the plate is on basically on the top. The old design, the plate was on the bottom. And you can see how much of a difference in angle there is. I mean, this one's almost I don't know, this is going two directions. It's going that way and it's going up. So when it interfaces with the tie rod, it's got a pretty wicked angle. This is relatively flat now in two dimensions. It's flat right to left and front to back. Um, the idea is this, the tie rod will intersect it because this is, as this goes through its angle, as it pitches around the kingpin, it, it does change angle a little bit. That's the point of it. Um, as this goes, this angle will change slightly through its arch, but it's not enough of a change that it affects the spindle because the spindle can be offset a little bit. Or not the spindle, excuse me, the tie rod. Anyway, so there's kingpin inclination built into these 14 degrees. That's why these look a little funny. They're not straight up and down. Um, the point of that is to make the front tires correct the steering geometry. Anyway, so we're going to go ahead and cut this one off, weld on the new pieces, which workbench is a bit of a mess so this is this is what the other piece is going to look like and I've already got the gusset cut that's roughly going to go right there at any rate so this is going to be essentially on there the way this worked out this is about a quarter inch down where I started the weld and it's about three eighths of an inch down so from here I don't want the weld to be right on top it ended up a little bit higher high there I don't want it to interfere with the bushing so I just ground it flat um, but it seems like that should work. I've already tested it on the cart, the, the, and the geometry seems to work out great. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one, put all the uh, bushings back together, put it back in the cart, and just to verify everything works perfect. Okay, so I cut the old piece off, They're laying right here. Got the new piece mocked up. I just put a tack on it. I'm going to show you how I did this. So basically, I leveled the spindle with the table. So I kind of use some magnets and some pieces of scrap metal to level it. Um, then I marked on the spindle, the center line, lined it up with my square here. And on the back, that's kind of hidden from view probably. I marked the line on the back here to find the center. And that is one inch, uh, this, this hole is one inch from center to the outside. So that gives us our Ackerman. Um, so what's gonna happen after I've got this welded in place again, I'm gonna put a brick uh, gusset under here. So that goes in there. It's going to go right where that magnet's at. So what I've done, um, and this is, I did the other one a little differently. This one's actually a lot easier to do. Um, after I got the spindle uh, mount set in parallel with the um, bolt, so the camera can see this, pretty well parallel with the what will be the axle. The axle's parallel to the ground. We want the 
what's going to be the tie rod mount to be parallel with the ground so as it goes through its turning radius it won't be binding at least that's the goal so on the back side flip it around again you can see it's got a quick little tack weld there um, so i'm going to finish weld that and then weld it on the bottom side and add the bracket we'll do that now okay so a little bit of uh, welding later and uh i've got two finished spindles so this is the last one i did Here's the sort of magnetized here. Here's the bottom of it. Um, it's turned out pretty good. So I think this is going to solve my problem and in the binding. So I'm going to put the bushings back in and mount them on the cart and see how it goes. Wow, so what a difference this makes. This is so much smoother. Um, really, really good. So it's uh, a lot easier. We're not bottoming out. We're not um, binding. This is nice and loose at, at, at rest and then at full lock. That's a full lock. And then the other direction, full lock. Lots and lots of motion there. So we're not binding up. So it bottoms out right here at the pitman arms um, before it even bottoms out at the, at the spindles. It's not even bottoming out right there either. So it's not touching. So very smooth action. So. After putting it together, um, <laughs> it's amazing, but the alignment did not change at all. I had a, a quarter inch toe in, and that's what it still has. So I think I'll take it for a test drive. Okay, so I'm filming this bit from the cockpit. Um, tried my dead pedal. This is the first time I drove it with the dead pedal. Man, that is so nice. If you have the chance, you get the space. The dead pedal is awesome. Gives you somewhere to rest your left foot, kind of plant you in the cart, and then you can smash the brake. Um, I can also get the brake from both sides the uh, gas pedal foot. Um, I think the geometry of this is going to allow me now to raise that pillow block a little bit. I uh, kind of see that those tie rods run at an angle and I did that before because they were binding. Now I think if I level them out a little higher, maybe a half inch, three quarters of an inch, that'll get my tie rod straighter which will probably give me a little better geometry. So anyway, I think we'll call that good. So that'll be the end of this video uh, for the part two of our spindle upgrade. In this video we fixed the geometry, um, cut off the original spindle mounts or the uh, tie rod mounts off the spindles uh, to correct the geometry. That worked out really well. So if you're building your own spindles, keep that in mind. You want to keep those mounting points for your, for your um, tie rods parallel to the ground. And you want your tie rod to be as parallel as possible. I'll upgrade that later. I'm not going to videotape that. I don't think it's necessary. Um, there was confusion in my previous post. I was referring to the kingpin inclination and uh, camber almost as uh, the same thing, which they're not. Camber is the angle of your wheel, kicked in or kicked out. Negative camber would be the bottom would be in. Positive camber would be the top would be in. Uh, some of the old time cars, the wheels kind of did this, like a Bugatti or something. More modern cars run like this. You see race cars like that. Um, for these wheels, I don't think there's any function to that, as far as benefits, uh, some people tell me that it's better to kick them in a little bit. Mine is pretty much straight up and down. Um, the kids' model wasp has one degree where they're narrower at the top, and that's a camber. Uh, caster, about seven degrees. You can adjust that with a round tube by just angling it back, but we welded seven degrees into the mount so that they're, if you set your uh, axle up straight up and down, meaning the, the drop axle, the tube part, straight up and down, then you're going to have seven degrees. You can Pull it back a little more, probably to 10 degrees. That'll make it a little more st stable at higher speeds. Uh, what it does, it, it makes the wheels track forward. So if you let go of the wheel, it should, should go straight and not hunt around. Um, I'm running a quarter inch toe in, so the front wheels are towed in a little bit, quarter inch from the back. If you measure from the center of the tread, center of the tread on the front, there's a quarter inch difference, narrower at the front. Um, so kingpin inclination is 14 degrees. That's what works for the, this height of wheel. Um, you can adjust that a little bit if you like, but 14 is what Albert Lies used. That's where I got the idea. Thanks, Albert. And it seems to work great. Uh, the car turns great, handles great. I'm not sure how much really difference it's going to make. I drove Al's car, and oh my gosh, his car drives so nice. Uh, I haven't driven mine at speed yet on a track. I'm hoping it drives half as good as his car. If it does, I'll be happy. Um, so again, there's the original drawing. Um, if you can't remember, what, if you didn't see the other one, kingpin or uh, the center of the kingpin intersects the tire. So that's the idea. So that anyway, the tire would be over here. It's about 
three inches from the if you draw the center line the, the tire is the tire patch should go three inches from the center line uh, in relation to your the center of your spindle so on the standard as says here in, in the modified one which I did I can, uh, notched it back 14 degrees and that's how that spindle is mounted 14 degrees off center so anyway hope you enjoyed this video if you have any questions about cycle cars or anything we're doing uh, join us on Facebook Arizona cycle cart club or www.cyclecartclub.com that's not my website it's just a site that we uh, learn about cycle carts and have fun with them thanks for watching so just for fun I took the whole thing apart because I'm getting ready to paint it laid it out on the driveway I think this is pretty cool it kind of looks like one of those monogram kits Yes, anyway, I thought this would be fun. Take a look at all the parts that kind of go into a cycle cart. When you're putting it together, you don't really realize all the pieces and parts and all the bolts and nuts. And um, When you put it all on the ground like this, it's quite a bit. So anyway, there you go. A little extra bonus feature. Thanks for watching.